So you attracted the man absolutely, of your dreams. Absolutely. Absolutely. By becoming the woman of my dreams. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's whoa. the key. Get, 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 get a little gummy bear. I'm sorry, don't get a little gummy. You said you attracted. Yeah. Bring that back on the okay, because you're going to be eating. All the white ones. Yeah, all, all the pineapples. All, all the pineapples. Smooth. Hey, man, you a fool for this one? While we're building these businesses and building these dreams and manifesting all our desires, stress and anxiety is a part of that. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is the definition of love? I have been an adult since I was 16. I definitely feel like I've transitioned into a better place mentally. And another part of self-care, um, self-pleasure, orgasms, they're healing. So Absolutely. that part is important. No cap, we went AO, about to get a play go, pull up to the table, let's go. Yo, so the number one rising entrepreneur is a black woman. I'm keeping it above, which is a black woman. It's not a black man, it's not a white man, it's not a white woman. It is a sister um, who is really making noise in today's um, economy and community. And I'm not ashamed of that. You know, brothers, we gotta step up our game because these sisters are coming single, they're coming um, single mothers, they're, they're coming with, with a lot of stuff over their heads, but they're saying, hey, I refuse to be just this person and not building something um, on the side and building something for my kids. And so uh, we're gonna talk about it today. Today, we're gonna be talking to America's favorite home girl. Um, I was first introduced to her a while back by one of my friends and I was like, yo, you gotta get her on your show. So y'all know me, I don't put a lot of people on my show uh, because I just wanna do some research and make sure that I I am at least in alignment with them at least 80%. I'm not gonna be in alignment 100% with every single body uh, because my stance on certain things are a little different, which is cool. But I meet some dope people who are doing some dope things and this young lady is, she's killing the game and uh, her name is Coriel. Did I say it right? You said it right. I said it right! You did that. Coriel! Coriel! And uh, she's recently got married to a dope boy, to not a dope boy, to a dope guy. Um, and uh, won't, won't put his name out here today, but bro, I need to get you on the show because yes. what we're talking about today is going to be dope. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about how to get the money and the honey. How to get the money and the honey. And she believes that, ladies, you can have it all. You can have the wealth, you can have the status, and you can have a good man. So today's show's going to be good because I'm like, I don't know if you can get them all at the same time, but you can get it. I don't know if we can get it at the same time. So we're going to have a conversation. We're going to have a real conversation. So make sure y'all share this podcast. Hit the thumbs up because I know she's going to drop some jewels for us for us today. Um, and if you listen to this on the podcast, hey, leave a comment. Let me know what you liked about today's show. Uh, but before we get to my sister, do not forget, you guys, that one of the key ways that will help us, you know, when we get the money, like what we're going to talk about today. And when you get the money in a honey, one of those key things is to protect that honey, whether, you, whether that honey is your husband, whether that honey is your wife. Um, and you know, when you get the honey, you produce other honeys, some kids, okay? And one of the things that we should be doing when it gets to, when it comes to protecting our honey and our money, is life insurance. You know, we have to make sure, especially within the African-American minority community, uh, the, uh, that we are protecting people. It's time out. I'm tired of seeing people pass away and we gotta have a GoFundMe. Um, I, I'm, I'm tired of seeing family struggle uh, when their honey passes away. And for me, when I pass, my honey and my honeys uh, will, will, will have tears, uh, but they will have tears of joy and they will have tears of happiness um, because I know one, I'm in heaven. Two, I'm in heaven looking down on them because I left them some money. I left them a legacy. I left them with something because I was thinking about them. I loved them so much uh, that I was thinking about them. And I don't want you as a single mother, as a single father, as a family person, and you're saying, you know, I can't afford life insurance. You can. I want you to go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos. I've partnered with my friends ethos for the remaining part of this year to bring affordable life insurance to you. I know it's not, a se it's not sexy. It's not attractive to do it. I get it. Uh, but you know what? We need it. And if you sign up with ethos, not only will they give you life insurance for a very, very, very affordable rate, they're going to also throw in a free will specifically just for you and your family. So this way, if you are single and you do pass, you know what? Uh, you don't have to worry about the state deciding where your kids go. You don't worry about your family arguing over who gets what, what, what should they do. No, you can put everything inside the wheel to make sure your kids are covered, your, your, your wealth, your bank accounts, everything is good in good hands. And so do not allow yourself 
to get the money and the honey. And then when you pass, now your, hun your honey is struggling. Your honey is, is, is trying to figure things out because you didn't put things into place. One of the best things you could do for your loved ones, for your family, is to think about them while you're alive for life after death. And um, get it, I have them. It takes you 10 minutes, no blood work at all, uh, no doctor visits. You can literally fill out the form within 10 minutes and you can be fully insured and protecting your loved ones within 24 hours. You can get a million dollar policy for like 50, 60 bucks. So check out my friends over at Ethos. Go to anthonyneal.com forward slash ethos. Uh, but tell your girls, t tell your people that we about to have a good conversation, all right? Y'all know me. I don't really sugarcoat nothing. We get straight into it. We're going to be talking about single life. We're going to be talking about dating life. We're going to talk about this money. Because uh, Coriel just got married a year ago. A year ago, yep. Coming a up on a year, year and a half. A year and a half. And so how do you feel being married? Because I think what, back in 2010, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. a little bit of research, you left an abusive relationship. I did. Um, and you ended it, you was engaged. I was engaged, yep. And you ended it in 2010. I did. And this is the first marriage since 2010. Only marriage ever. Oh, y'all should have saw her face. <laughs> She was only smiling. This is the hold up, bro. Only one. Only one. Don't get it twisted. Get the record straight. Yo, okay, okay, okay. Let's let's go back to the past. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? As a single woman, what what were some of the things that you've learned as a single woman um, that you want to say that? Oh, I got this. Yeah, this. Let's, let's, let's go here. This is not even on my list. Um, when you were single, you probably made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. If you can go back to your single life before getting married to the love of your life. Yes. What's up, Kendra? Um, you know, what would you do differently back then as a serial entrepreneur, as literally, you know, America's favorite homegirl? What would you do differently back then when you were single? I definitely would have been super intentional about what I actually desired and what I deserved. Um, I spent a lot of time, and the whole reason I got myself into that messed up situation is because my point of attraction was off. Like okay. what I was saying I wanted, the things that I thought mattered, the things that, you know, on paper sounded good were not really the things that I truly desired or deserved. And so going after or even setting my sights on something that was not for me, that's definitely how I ended up, you know, in a situation that was like that I was not deserving of so when you say you weren't deserving of because mm -hmm. uh, we want to be respectful of, uh, of the man from the past you know what I'm saying what what, what were you talking about what? <laughs> he wasn't respectful we ain't got to be respectful you know we I mean, hey, listen, that, we're not going to give that kind of okay, energy all right, you know what I'm saying you got a yeah, great yeah, man yeah, right yeah, now yeah, yeah. without him I would not have what I have so absolutely I definitely definitely um, attribute that situation I say, you know, the thing that I really thought was just going to break me down is really what built me up. It gave me the platform to start my entrepreneurial career, and it yeah. led me to learning the lessons to, you know, attract the man of my, uh, the man of my dreams. So oh, you attracted the man absolutely, of your dreams. Absolutely. By becoming the woman of my dreams. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's whoa. the key. Get a, get a, piece get of a little key. gummy bear. You know I'm I'm get a little gummy. You said you attracted yeah. Bring that back over okay, here because you're going to be eating. All the white ones. Yeah, all, all the pineapples. All, all the pineapples. Smooth. Loop, 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 loop. As a matter of fact, um, y'all need to sponsor my show. Um, you became the woman of your dreams mm -hmm. that eventually attracted the, the man of your dreams. Yep. So so you believe that a woman can, can accomplish all of her dreams. She can get the money. She mm -hmm. can start the business. Yes. And get the honey, the man. Mm hmm Or whatever you desire. That felt so weird saying that. Um, but I got to be real. Um, all at the same time. I'm So I think it takes prioritization a thousand percent. I think that it's very tricky if you are totally, totally struggling financially. Okay. It's very tricky for you to focus on love and dating and relationship Facts. because Facts. your priority is like survival. Facts. For a man or a woman. Okay. And so I don't think you can necessarily like be out here putting your best foot forward dating if you are like uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and you're right. depressed and you're going through all of these things. Right. So the biggest thing for me was becoming. Uh, so instead of me just saying, I want to attract this man from who I am right now, I haven't lived up to my potential. I haven't done the things to become the woman that I know that I was born to be. That's so good. And I attracted a mess of a man because I was a mess. So this whole, you know, this isn't just like a theory I came up with. It's literally what I know for sure based on, you know, my experience. So I was 24. In okay. my mind, 25, I needed to be married. Okay. So I literally wrote this letter to God, spelled out all of these stupid, just superficial 
things that a 24 year old thinks are important in a husband right. and literally wrote this letter in October on March 6, 2010, the letter walked into my life. And I mean, he was 18 of the 20 things to the point where the day he met me, he told me he was going to I was going to be his wife to the point where within two weeks I had to pull out this letter and show it to him like, look, this is you, you know, like so that whole writing it down makes it real, you know, making the list. All of that stuff is really, really real. Like you got to be careful what you wish for if you're not. Um, wishing from a place of knowing what you desire and knowing what you deserve. Mine was all desire, but nothing, not deserve. It was all the... So everything on your list was just all desire. St- just silly, superficial, you know, what I wanted him to do. Tall and skin, what, thick, yeah, big chest. All of the silly things that look good, sound good, but weren't really good for me. Wow. And so I got exactly that. You got exactly that. Exactly that. Exactly what was on your list, but two things. But you ended up not marrying that guy. Absolutely not. Because he came with a whole boatload of other things that I hadn't even considered. And so, you know, you asked me what I would, you know, tell my single self or what I would tell single women out there is getting clear about what you truly desire and being intentional about it. Not just saying you want what looks good. Not just saying, you know, based on what your mama think you should have. You know, everybody's mom has their this idea of who they want for you. But then you get that and you're unfulfilled. You get that and you're not happy. You get that and you're feeling you're depressed because you got this thing you thought you wanted, but it wasn't really what you desired. So, so good. knowing what you want outside of what everybody else wants for you, I think is super important. So real quickly, so everyone can know like who you are and where you are today. Mm-hmm. Break that down in like 60 seconds. Like, Ooh. Who are you and where are you today? Your success? Stuff yeah, like so um, started out in the classroom, turned that $32,000 teaching salary into a million dollar digital brand. I now have a global classroom where I'm teaching um, black women specifically how they can stop living paycheck to paycheck by starting new, uh, new streams based on the skills that they already have. So mm-hmm. that is like my baby. Um, Hold on, pause. Yes. I'm going to rewind. Yes. I wish we could do that on the show. Like, <laughs> um, you went from making thirty six thousand dollars. Thirty two. Thirty two. Yeah. As a school teacher. As a school teacher. I told y'all school teachers. Second and third grade. Thousand yep. dollars. I told y'all. Y'all be thinking I'd be playing with my numbers. I know my math. Okay. You went from making thirty two thousand dollars to generating over a million dollars in serving people digitally. Mm-hmm. Yep. As a content creator. Yep. Pause. I told y'all, but I tell y'all, <laughs> content creators are becoming the fastest small, the fastest growing small type of like small business. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, so if she's doing a million, I mean, she's doing producing at least 88 to a hundred thousand dollars a month. Y- 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 y'all sleeping. Um, uh, so now you're there, mm-hmm. right? You- you're doing that. You're married. I am. So you got the money. I got the money. And the honey. I got the honey. I got my little honey. We you just, got a little I, man? I got a little man. Um, he's 15 months. So 15. all of the things came together based on those lessons learned and acting on the lessons learned, not just, you know, actually learning the lessons, not just going through the things. So someone watching right now, and I just, you know, I I just follow my spirit. We Mm -hmm. don't get to the questions, but someone watching right now is looking at you saying, dang, Coriel, like I, I like where you are now, but they are where you were 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. They're in a relationship that, that, that they know they need to get out of. Mm -hmm. Some of them have already left the relationship, but they're scared to move on because they're still tied to the past. Mm -hmm. What were some things that you put into place that helped you break through and that helped you move forward from where you were to where you are now? What was that bridge? What were things that you put into place? The biggest bridge I would say is accountability. Okay. Because I, here I was 25, you know, when I got out of the relationship, Um, It was an abusive relationship. I felt like I had, you know, just gotten myself into just this crazy situation. But when it ended, I never once blamed him. I never once felt like you just came here and did all of this stuff to me. Like my immediate my immediate thought was, what was I putting out to attract this? Like, what was I going through mentally to think that this is what I deserve for me? It was only eight months from start to finish, but I lasted eight months, like eight months. I say it was like temporary insanity that I was experiencing this and and doing this to myself. And so the biggest thing on the other side of it was holding myself accountable to know that if you want to be married one day, you know, just because this didn't work out doesn't mean that I didn't still have that goal. So if I know that I want to be a wife one day, what do I need to do today to prepare for that? Prior 
prior to that, I didn't have that conversation with myself. I just said, this is what I want. Let me tell God I want it and let me go get it. Okay. And that's what I did. And I got it and I, it wasn't right. Uh -huh. And so, you know, hindsight being 2020, it's like, well, if this is what you did the first time and you didn't get the result that you wanted, uh -huh. what do you need to change? Because you still want the result, yeah. but you got to change the route that you go to get uh, it. Absolutely. And so the biggest thing was holding myself accountable, um, being self-aware enough to know that I didn't want to just jump into something else. Like I literally took an entire year of just like, I, I call it like my my soul searching season. Like I was reading all the books. That's when I read, you know, Think and Grow Rich. That's when I started therapy up again. That's mm -hmm. when I got into meditation. Like it's when I really, really started investing in myself aside from me wanting to be a wife, aside from, you know, me wanting to be in a relationship, it was becoming the woman of my own dreams, like really figuring out who that person was, because I knew if I became that person or got as close as I could to becoming that person, then I would just start attracting better options. So that was the biggest part of the bridge. And I like that. You know, I think the bridge, a lot of people skip over the bridge part. Like, and I believe that it is, I call it the D word, which is discipline. Um, discipline is the bridge from where you are now to where you want to go tomorrow. And it sounds like on your discipline bridge, it was accountability and therapy. You know, I've partnered with BetterHelp this year because I believe some of the reasons why people are not getting out of debt and building wealth or starting their business is because they don't have discipline um, to say, you know what, I need to seek help. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think us as entrepreneurs, we're always giving, giving, giving and serving people, but no one's really serving us and giving back to us and really helping us process things. I'm curious um, because you just when you, when, you, when you talk about therapy, I like to live there for at least like five minutes mm -hmm. because y'all know my heart. It's I want to help your mind, your greatest asset, which I believe is your number one business, be the best and be the strongest you possibly be because that's how you can make more money. But in your journey, mm -hmm. why do you think therapy was so important for you to get to where you are today? Um, because I needed someone outside of myself that had a different set of. Uh, um, experiences, a different perception, mm -hmm. a different perspective. Yeah. Um, using my best capabilities, using everything I had in me, I got myself into an abusive relationship. Gotcha. And so from that point on, if I wanted to improve, if I wanted to attract better, I knew that I needed something other than what I currently possessed. And that was just another person. So an objective ear, you know, someone who can cause you to just consider things in a different way, that was like a thousand percent necessary for me to, um, you know, improve myself so that I could start attracting better. Do you feel as if the, the rewards of that, was it hard? Like, was it hard talking to a therapist for you? You know, I'm, I think I'm pretty, well, I'm getting away from saying I'm tough, I'm strong, I'm a soft woman now, but I got in that, in that therapist's office and when I say she might have said hello and I started crying, it was Are like the, the hello my name is and I'm <laughs> <laughs> boo -hoo crying. So I won't say that it was hard, but it was uncomfortable because I do, you know, um, keep my emotions to myself. I'm not often talking to people about how I really, really in my heart of heart feels. And that's what therapy is for. Right. It's to have that objective person, that person that's not going to judge you, that person who isn't going to talk about you when you leave, that person who doesn't really know you. Yeah. And so you can be open and honest and just release. Yeah. That's really what it is, like releasing all that you've been holding on to. And all of us are holding on to something. Yeah. Whether you realize it or not, whether you see how it's wow. affecting you right now or not, we're all holding on to something. And sometimes you need somebody else to come in and help you like cut those ties. Do you think you've built your wealth? Therapy has played a, a role in, in you securing your wealth today. Therapy has played a role in everything. Everything. Wow. Well, listen, um, you guys, uh, we, I, I didn't know this was going to be talked about, but since we're talking about therapy, um, I want to encourage you because I agree. I agree with Coriel. Like I, to this day, you know, I have some tough days, you know, and I can't talk to my staff, you know, I can't talk to my mom and my dad. I need someone I can talk to that can ask me the hard questions, mm -hmm. that can continue stretching me and stretching me. Well, wait, is it really them? Or was it just the way you were thinking? Mm -hmm. And man, I feel so refreshed every time I actually, I get off, I, I'm, I, I do my stuff through BetterHelp, right? So I don't have to go into the office. I can actually text my therapist like, hey, do you have some time today mm -hmm. to talk? And so I get two times with her for free a month inside of my package with BetterHelp. But then sometimes I may text him like, hey, can I get another session in this month? And to me, um, LeBron James spends close to like, what? Is it like a million dollars on himself? See? 
a million dollars on himself every single year just to perform. But we as in black people or we and just in the general people, we don't want to spend money investing into ourselves mm -hmm. so we can be better individuals. And I was like, if, if LeBron can spend a million, I can spend fifteen thousand dollars a year. Not saying therapy is fifteen grand a year, but I do other stuff like gym and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. food and stuff like that. But you know, I, I'll spend two hundred dollars a month, you know, so I can have therapy to keep this growing. So um, I would encourage you all to go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash better help. Um, they are giving away my tribe fifteen percent off this month. Just by, just because you're a part of my tribe. And I'm telling you, man, you could be like her. Go from making $42,000 <laughs> to a million dollars and million dollars to having a honey. Honey having some other honeys. You know what I'm saying? But um, she couldn't be where she is today without really getting that help and that accountability. So I would encourage you, if you're watching this show, try it out. Uh, don't try it out for us. Try it out for you. Try it out for your life. Try it out for your peace. All right? Um, so I, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. I, wrote, I, wrote, I wrote this question down. Uh, why do you think so many black women specifically uh, believe they can't have it all? Like they can't be happy. They can't have or do you think black women think they can't have it all? They can't have the husband. They can't have the money. Uh, they can't have the career field that they desire. Um, because I have been here with some lady saying, man, you know, I, I need to focus on just getting a man and then let him take care of this. Or I'm just going to focus on getting this job and I'm not worried about a man. Mm -hmm. Like, Do you believe women ladies are thinking about that? Absolutely. I think Real. black women specifically, we were not raised to prioritize partnership. We were raised to prioritize our independence. We were raised to be strong. We were raised to be smart. We were raised to carry the weight of the household. We were raised to be able to do it ourselves in case that's the burden that is put on us. Is that how you were raised? Yes. You was raised? Mm-hmm. By two military parents who wanted me to be as prepared as possible to take care of myself. I never once had a conversation with my mother or my father about becoming a wife. For real? No, it was it went from, you know, you too young to date boys to you being fast to um, you know, and then it's out of nowhere is well, when are you gonna give us some grandbaby? When are you gonna get married? There's no bridge though. There's there was no bridge. That is so true. Mm-hmm. And men are provide, or men are taught to be pro to be the providers, yep. but we're never taught how to love. Exactly. You know, we're never taught how to be emotional without being too too soft. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, no, you don't don't, don't cry soft. about that. Yeah, yeah. Don't, man up. Suck it up. Yep. Why is yep. that the case? Because you're right. Ladies these days and time are being taught. You don't need a man. Mm -hmm. You can do it on your you own. You can do it all on your own. Yep. And that is a huge turnoff to me. It's not just a turnoff. It is. Um, it's like a toxic trait. Ooh. Because you Hurry get, up. I mean, I'm just saying. That's and toxic. Listen, it is, but it's. I don't think it's voluntary. I think it's in you. But this is why you need therapy. This is why you need conversations like this. This is why you have to consider somebody other than just you and your family. You know, if I was, if I was okay with doing the things that I saw, I definitely would not be where I was. If I was okay with just doing things how my family does them, I would be getting the same results they got and not what I actually desired. And so you Ooh. have to consider you know, doing something different if you want something different. And a lot of times how we were raised is just not going to get you the result that you want. Oh, my God. Well, I so mean, did had... your mama do it differently? Like, did she have a conversation? Because no, my, my mama, but well, she ain't had that conversation with me. I don't know. I got to ask my sister. I don't know if my mom had the conversation with my sister. I don't think so. What about you, though? No. None of my parents never taught me how to be a husband. You know what I'm saying? They, they, I'll be honest. And my mom maybe. well, she watches my show. I love you, mama. I love you, mothers. I have four parents. You know what I'm saying? I have two biological parents and two step parents. Okay. Um, and they, they did a great job raising me, but even they've admitted that they did not train me in certain areas. We never had a conversation around sex. We never really had a conversation around how, how to build wealth. And we never really had a conversation around how to be a husband. Mm -hmm. So sex and money was my issue when I left the home. Money and sex got me in trouble, you know? I'm, 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 I'm whole. I'm clean. I was going to say that. But it's like, you know, I, I chased women. Mm -hmm. um, I chased the bag. Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand that if I chased one kingdom and chased learning how to be a better man, all that other I stuff would have came. Come. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so the things that were not taught to me ended up being the very same thing that helped, that played a role in me becoming homeless, you know? And so when I think about that, I'm like, man. Are we teaching our, our kids how, because some people will argue the statement saying, no, I was taught 
to be a wife. I was taught to, hey, whatever the man says, you do and just support the man. I've heard some people say that, but growing up. Is that being a wife? Whatever the man do, just support him. Is that? I don't know. You better. Okay. No, that ain't it. For real. Whatever the man do. So if your husband said, babe, I I love you. And I think what you're doing is cool. I want you to stay at home and just focus on our little kid. You can't do nothing else. Just focus on him. What, what are you going to say? Dang, your face. <laughs> First of all, the, oh, what? Man, the man who's in alignment, my husband who's in alignment with, with me, we're right. in alignment with one another, he would never say that. I get you in that part, but what if he's had a revelation? What if what if he just won't say, babe, you know, I, I got this. You know, we we, we out here busting our rear ends and, mm-hmm. and, and, and you have son or daughter. Son. And, and little man, you know, we, we, need, we need a little man to have, we, he need one of us mm-hmm. 24-7. Mm-hmm. So, babe, how about I go out here and I do what I do, but you stay home and raise little man. Mm-hmm. That's the revelation that I just got, babe. From the Lord? Is he, is he telling me that God told, if he's telling me that God has dropped this in his spirit, then it's a conversation we're going to have. But other than that, he's just joking. It's a joke. (laughs) He's just trying to see what I'm going to say. And I might play along with it, but no, sir. Yo. No, sir. Would you even at least have a conversation to hear his heart out and where the perspective is coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would that go? What would you say? Like, all right, babe, let's talk about it. That's what I would say. All right, babe, let's talk about it. And then I would say. Are you literally, are you saying let's talk about it? But are you like, I ain't doing it, but we can talk about it. It literally depends on how he presents it. It literally depends on that. All right, y'all married. Y'all laying up in the bed. It was a great night. I'm like, babe, babe, I had to start. Absolutely not. I'm not, about to, <laughs> I'm not about to burn down everything I done from, from a thought. Absolutely not. But that's why it's important to know who you're submitting to. That's why you have to be wise. But is that with submitting who you are if you in just alignment said? With. Absolutely that's Absolutely submitting. not. No, that's submitting. How was that submitting if, if you I just sub- said absolutely no, not? No, I'm saying if I were to submit to that, that would be submitting. But, but I know who I'm submitting to, and who I'm submitting to would never ask me to do that. Fact. My man would never ask me to give up on my dreams, to give up on who God created me to be because of an epiphany that just came to him. Absolutely not. I'll try to switch it up. Absolutely not. That was a nice try, though. He tried to catch me up, y'all. I do submit to my husband, and he submits to the Lord, but not to no random thought that he got at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> No, sir. Okay, 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 okay. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're you building a seven, I mean, you, you have a seven-figure business. You're building, you winning. Um, uh, was your husband successful like you before you met him? My husband is successful in a different way. So he is okay. not an entrepreneur. Okay. Well, he is a part-time entrepreneur. He does yeah. real estate. Mm-hmm. And we have, you know, some businesses that we partner on, but he is a pharmacist by trade. Mm. So his success is in a different way, but absolutely. He's still bringing in that bag. No, absolutely, absolutely. But what if he was like the manager at Walmart? So. Would you have still given him a chance? Prior to me meeting my husband, it's Mm -hmm. a whole another conversation, but I actually put myself on this Tinder challenge, this 10 date Tinder challenge. Oh. One of these Tinder dates, there was a, there was, of course, you know, the engineer, the whoever, but there was a um, janitor that I, that, I, that, I, that I went on a date with. truck You know, I've never, ever, 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 anybody who knows me for real knows I've never been the person who has this, like, type that I live in this box. I like who treats me right. I like who presents themselves in an appropriate way. So I'll give you a chance. Uh-huh. And then it's up to you to, you know, make it or break it. So what their jobs and their, their income didn't turn you off? It was really I was, more so about... I was focused on building, again, being raised to be, you know, you do it yourself so you don't have to depend on anybody. So that's not necessarily what I was looking for. I wasn't looking for someone to come along and take care of me. That's uh, not... That wasn't what I valued the most. What's that word? I want to. I don't want to say it wrong. Where you date up. It's like pop something. Because if I say it wrong, it's, it means something else. What's the word? I don't know the word. I, it's like... I don't want to say it wrong because if I say it wrong, people looking at me like, "Don't say it, Ayo," because one word means you you date multiple people, oh, and then the other one me. is well, where you me on sh- polyamory. I thought those were both so, dating uh, multiple people. But it's like one of them is you are dating multiple, and the other one is she's dating up only. She will only date up. Oh, I'm not familiar oh, with that term. Oh, so, but yeah. that ain't me. But that so, wasn't that's me. why I say I didn't want to say the wrong word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People are like, hey, Anthony, what word are you talking about? You know, it, there, there is a there is a word. If y'all know the name of the word, put it in, in the chat. You know, because I'm I curious. Know I know it starts with a P. I know it's like 
plot something. Uh, but another one of those words is like you know the husband has two, mm -hmm. um, two, 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 one man and, and a girlfriend. Da da da. But the other word is the woman only dates up. So you're you're not saying that you were only looking for a man that made more money than you. You were looking like for good partnership. How do you make me feel? How do I make you feel? How can we partner together? Absolutely. And you got that just in a different way. Because, I mean, he, he, he's in pharmacy. Yeah. But he's still bringing in that bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's good. Yeah. He's good. I like I like Cario. She, she all right with me. Thank she, you. She, you all right with me. So, I, let me ask you this question. I, I got this question. <laughs> I'm about to ask this question. Um, there are so many successful ladies like yourself that are single. Mm hmm Got the bag. Beautiful. But ain't got no love. Do you think that's the man's fault or do you think it's the woman's fault? Um, I don't think you can blame anyone outside of yourself for your experiences. So I think that, I don't want to say it's your fault, but I think it is your responsibility Ooh. to get what you desire. Don't. You can't blame somebody else for you not having what you want if you haven't done the work to get it. So I mentioned my family. I come from a family who, you know, everybody has kids, mm -hmm. but we ain't been to no weddings. Right. I'm talking about I had I had never been to a wedding until college and it was like a friend. So still to this day, my family has had two, one and a half weddings and the one was mine. Wow. So that's just not, we I, we just don't get married. We have kids, you don't ask who the kids are. You know, it's just this thing. You show up with a baby, nobody asks questions. What? And I think it's pretty common in the black community, unfortunately. unfortunately. So I knew that that is not, what I wanted for myself. And so me knowing, using my logic, not just using my emotions, mm -hmm. me knowing that this is not what I desired for myself, I knew that I had to do something different. And mm -hmm. so I did not, I wasn't okay with just having a baby because I wanted children. I, you know, I, I never, ever, ever spoke over my life that I had baby fever. Family fever was my thing. Mm -hmm. Don't give me no baby. Where's the father and the family? You know, that's what I wanted to attract. And yeah. so being intentional about my words and then being intentional about um, my actions and making sure they were in alignment because a lot of times we say what we want. You know, we want all of these things, but we're willing to settle for whatever we can get. Mm -hmm. We say we want this healthy, happy relationship, but then the per first person who hits us up on Friday night, it's like, okay, let's chill. Yeah. It's like, okay, let's go to dinner. I'm hungry. Yeah. And all of those, the discipline you mentioned, all of those um, decisions that are not in alignment, they're just going to slow you down. And so I think that's what a lot of people are doing. They're speaking what they want in one respect, but then their actions don't don't align with it. So what should a single woman right now be doing if she is single and she's successful? I mean, I think about 72% of my tribe who watch and follow my brand are single black, you know, women. Mm -hmm. A single black woman, right? Um, but respectfully. I always hear that they say there's no good men out here. Not true. And I'm like, and I be I be trying to figure out a way to be like, well, maybe it's mm. you. Know. But and sometimes it's not. I mean, you know, sometimes they they do run into some some bad men. Mm -hmm. And there's and, and there are there are bad men and there's bad women. Well, that's bad grammar, but just bad a little bit of everybody mm -hmm. out there, right? But what should a woman do to position herself as she's building her successful career? What are some practices that she should put into place to start attracting, like what you said, you know, the good men so she can have a different caliber of men to, to choose from? I would say the number one thing, you got to start using logic in your love life the same way you use logic to build your business. Oh, great. So I know you can name probably five super successful, super intelligent women mm -hmm. who get played in relationships, mm -hmm. end up settling for, you know, just, we can name them. Even mm -hmm. select, we can name women who mm -hmm. are just brilliant and bossed up and then they're getting played. And I think that it's because, you know, they use their logic, they're using their mind, they're using everything that they have when it comes to building their business. But then when it comes to these men, it's like, oh, he look good. Or he got a little check. Or he, you know, all of these superficial things that are 
based on our emotions, based on how we feel and not what's actually good for us. So the number one thing I would say is like using your logic. A lot of times we just act off of emotion when it comes to relationships and that's how we get caught up with somebody we thought was good for us. But, you know, hindsight being 2020, you saw the red flags. Mm -hmm. Your 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 you know, your gut intuition told you this was not it, but you ignored it. So number one, start using logic. Number two, trust your intuition. Cause I believe that's God's greatest gift to a woman. Your gut instinct, your intuition. Determination. Not determination, I can, uh spirit of discernment. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I mean, I can tell you the day that I knew that I was in an I was in a relationship with an abusive man. Like the day he did something and it was like, oh. Wait a minute. And, and, you overlooked and I it. overlooked it. But I can like I can tell you right now the day that it happened. Wow. And I and six six months down the line is when I finally was like, okay, yeah, enough is enough. Right. But we have those moments. We have those red flags, those black flags that are like dropping in our spirit and we like, no, he'll be all right. Or we could figure it out, or we could work through it, or he's just tripping right now, or whatever. So trusting your intuition for sure. And then the last one I would say, um, not settling, mm. like being okay with being single and until you um, attract someone that you actually desire what and does deserve. settling look like though? Settling looks like you um, taking what you can get instead of waiting for what you want. I think we've all done that on both sides. Mm -hmm. But women, we get on Facebook, we see, you know, somebody else and got engaged, somebody else is having a baby and we start asking ourselves, okay, well, wait a minute. Well, this is not happening for me, so maybe I should just hit up so-and-so. And, -so. and yeah. we go down looking at our text messages. Well, so-and-so did. He did text me, you know, and I, let me just hit him back. And we go into these, like, cycles of dealing with the same people over and over or settling back into something just because we're comfortable with it or used to it or don't feel like, you know, meeting some somebody new. Because yeah. it's it's draining. Dating is draining. Dating is. For men and women, it yeah. takes a lot of effort and energy. So it's easy to be lazy. It's easy to say, I'll just go back to comfort when that's not really, you know, what right. God created for you. Man, yo, yo, Coriel dropping his jewels. Because I think a lot of us, and this is not just for the for the ladies, y'all. This, this is for the brothers, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes I feel like that. I talk about that to my therapist often. I'm like, dang, I'm 38. I'm about to be 40 in two years. And I haven't found the love of my life, you know? And I'm like, God, what do I, what do I do? Is it me? And some of it was me. Like, it really was. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Rewind. <laughs> Delete that. Uh, it was all me. Because I, I wasn't man enough to admit, here are some of the things that you're doing and that you're saying that's preventing you from keeping the woman that you desire. Mm -hmm. And when I literally really started talking that through with my therapist, like one of them, which I say it publicly on my shows, I, I was very selfish because I'm always giving. I'm talking to people for a living. And when I would get off, I don't want to talk to nobody. I, why do I want to be on the phone with you for a whole hour mm -hmm. when I just spent five hours speaking and laughing in people's faces and signing autographs and doing this and that? I'm like, when I come home, I don't want to talk to you, you know? And that wasn't healthy because most ladies are going to want that quality time and conversation. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, hey, how was your day? Good. How was your day? And then she would start talking, and I'd be like, oh, shit. You know why that was, though? Why was what? Why you were, why you were doing that, why you were experiencing that. Why? That wasn't the one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, the one, you not going to, she going to get off the phone with you. Shaba, I felt that. I mean, I, I when I tell you like, I was the ooh. person, I don't want to talk on the phone to even my homegirls. But this man, I was all night long, hours mm. on end. And that's when I realized it's not that you don't want to talk on the phone. You didn't want to talk to those other people. So you just pissed some people off. Right that's how now. you'll know. That's how you'll know. You specifically. That's she, how you'll know. She said that. Not it's, me. Facts, <laughs> it's, fa it's true. It's true. She it's just true. said it's facts, bro. It's and true. I mean, I, I'm for real. I, 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 I agree. I believe that's what my therapist said. She said, hey, you're going to need to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. any, any woman that you with is going to want to talk. But at the same time, that same woman would understand she doesn't need as much time Absolutely. with you because she understands who you are Absolutely. and what you do. And so she was like, it's coming. But I had to first acknowledge myself, yes. like what you said. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I'm single because of Anthony O'Neill. I've dated some amazing ladies and probably missed out on one or two of them. The others, oh, God bless them. <laughs> um, God bless them. How, how do ladies get the money? 
I think, do you knock people who work nine to five jobs? Absolutely not. No. Do I think everybody should have another stream of income? Absolutely. Do okay. I think everybody should be an entrepreneur? No, it's not for everybody. It's definitely not. Not, no. It's definitely not. So she's watching right now, nine to five. Mm -hmm. What are some good ideas for a side business for a woman? Okay, so the biggest thing, um, the biggest thing I like to say is like, you don't have a money problem, you have a mindset problem. A mm -hmm. lot of times, we another thing we were raised to believe is you gotta go to school, get the good grades, get the degree, get the good job, get the benefits, yada, yada, yada. So a lot of us are operating with that mindset. So mm -hmm. we're thinking that if we don't have a degree in this thing, we can't do this thing. Mm -hmm. We're thinking that if we um, don't have years and years of experience of doing this thing, we're not qualified to do it. And so a lot of times, we just have to change our mindset around how we can get money. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to go get another degree like I did. Put yourself in debt for a couple hundred dollars of a raise. You know, you don't have to go and get a second job. Pause right there. Okay. I, like, I, I, I love what you just said, Cabral. She said, go put yourself in debt just to get a couple hundred dollars don't of a raise. Don't do it. Learn from, listen. Okay, go back to what you're saying. Just, I just want to repeat do that, that again. Please don't do that. Um, but you don't have to do those things that we think we have to do in order to you know, make money. We live in like the gig economy right now. Nice. So, I mean, you can be out here delivering groceries and making a couple extra hundred dollars per week doing something simple. Simple. Now, I would do that before I did Uber. You know, I don't really want to talk to a lot of people, but you can do the same thing and grocery shop, you Absolutely. know, make some money. Absolutely. But digital products is where I kind of like to live because mm -hmm. it takes no investment. You're using the information you already have in your head, you're turning it into income. Yeah. So you can create an ebook, you can create a course, you can create a cheat sheet, a checklist. I mean, any digital product under the sun, all of us have something that we can teach and you don't have to have a degree um, to be able to do that. And I mean, random things. I literally paid somebody less than 30 days ago to teach me how to sleep train my child. She don't have a degree in sleep training. She's not certified. She's just someone who has mastered a skill. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who needed this skill that she has, and I willingly, gladly, eagerly paid her to teach me how to get my baby to go to sleep. Very random thing, but this is something she realized she was gifted in, and, and she figured out how to monetize it. So it doesn't have to be that deep. You paid someone. A pretty penny, too. A nice... was, And it was worth it. It was worth every dollar. Without saying a dollar amount. Was it was it, was a comma in it? It wasn't a comma, now. Okay. Now, I would have got that baby to sleep on my own. <laughs> it wasn't a comma. It wasn't no comma. But it was, it was a good amount of it money. It was a good amount of money. To, to, to teach... For her to teach you with the gift and the talent that she has mastered... That God put on the inside of her yep. to teach you how to help your baby go to sleep. Yep. Now, this is a first-time mother. I'm a first-time mother, okay? Wow. So she didn't say, I don't have 10 kids. I'm not qualified, uh -huh. right? This is someone who literally mastered this skill herself wow. with her own child, wow. practiced it on a couple other people, and then packaged it up and sold it. And so And it's worth every—I've told everybody about this lady, like, worth every penny. And, and now she's going to make however much more money off of me just for me referring other people to and her. And watch this. She didn't have to go into debt to start that, nope. that business. Not at all. So it was literally her information became turnkey. Yep. Instantly. So start there. We to, all have something. Right. We all have a skill, something that we've mastered. Even if it's dressing. You know, you can get paid to do virtual styling. You can get paid to be a personal shopper. You can literally, y'all, it's a million ways to get it. Like you can make money if you get out of your out of your head. So Forbes came out and said that um uh, the content creation space is worth like $2.2 .2 billion this year, right? And this is in what? We're in like August um, when, when the show comes out today. But then by the end of 2022, it'll be worth $20 mm -hmm. billion. Dollars. Solely from just examples of what you just said. Like, hey, I'm taking this information that I know and I'm turning it into and I'm packaging it well. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm a a licensed doctor in this space. Nope. I'm just saying, hey, I, I put in hours. I've learned. I've practiced. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Yep. And that's turning people into leaving a thirty-six thousand dollar or thirty-two thousand dollar job, mm -hmm. forty-five thousand dollar job, and making six figures plus a year from just packaging what God has given them on the inside. Yep. And I always tell people, education is important. Mm -hmm. You want to be a lawyer? I don't need you practicing for 10 hours and then saying you're my lawyer. Right. No. Take it behind the school. Mm -hmm. Get all the stuff passed. 
you a doctor, I don't need you going on YouTube and practicing on a, a teddy bear mm -hmm. thinking you can do a heart transplant. No, I'll take you behind the school. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be a hairstylist, you don't have to go to school for that necessarily. You need to put in a lot of hours, mm -hmm. sit with someone, and then maybe go get your license for sure. But a license is not four years of school. I wore faux locks for like two years straight. What are faux locks? I'm a You know, fake locks. Oh, fake, fake locks. locks. You know. Locks. The, oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. So the the girl who faithfully did my locks locks. quit <laughs> her job. Listen, y'all, real real player like, okay? Quit her job to do faux locks in her living room. Easily making a thousand dollars per day. What? In her living room. Huh? Doing a skill that she probably did learn off of YouTube. Huh? Quit her job. Huh? On her own terms. So you don't have a money problem, you have that's, a mindset problem. That's beneath too many people. That's I, I'm gonna quit my job and be, and do faux locks. That's beneath me. I'm ashamed to talk. I'm ashamed to say that's what I do. Let's just say she did that Monday through Friday and she made a grand a day. That's twenty thousand dollars a month. That's two hundred fifty some thousand dollars a Laughing year. Laughing all the way to the bank. Laughing. You know, I I hear people always say like influencers today is not a job. <sighs> You know, being a YouTuber is not a job. I was watching this video with, uh, T was it T-Pain? Yep. T-Pain. T-Pain now. Who, who, who is known in the music industry, mm -hmm. selling albums, working with some of the best people. He said he made more money on YouTube and Twitch. Twitch. And this year alone, 2022, which is more he made this what, six, seven months? Six, seven months of this year than the last four years in music combined. So when I hear people say, like, influencers are, and, 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 you know, people in the content creation space are, use, are using your gifts as a talent and making money off of that, that's not a job. I'm like, yo, you're right. It's not a job. But it's definitely providing and paying bills mm -hmm. and providing a lifestyle that our parents didn't have, exactly. couldn't have. You know what I'm saying? Like, how you go from being a school teacher that most people in the world, which let me say this, I think school teachers is one of the best careers a person can have um, because you're sowing into the future. I, so I, I wanna honor our school teachers. My mom is in the, in, in the uh, education experience and been there for the last 30 something years. So I'm not knocking that. But however, what I am saying is while you're doing that, what else is on the inside of you mm -hmm. that can generate more money to where you're doing your, your education stuff or whatever your career stuff is, because you 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 enjoy doing right. it, but your part time situation is paying you just as much, or maybe even more, because that's that's where your gift and your talents really are. Yep. And so, like at the end of this year, I think let me know if y'all want to see Corel there. I'm Coriel. Doing, I, Coriel. You was doing good. Too. I was doing so good, doing good. Coriel. Okay. Um, let me know if y'all want to see Coriel there, because I'm doing a a weekend right to where I'm I'm bringing in just fifty people. And I'm going to teach them how to take their gifts and their talents on the inside of them and turn it into a six-figure mm. business mm -hmm. minimum. Uh, but I'm going to give them a system. And only one in the C's, I have six C's, right? Only one in the C's about currency. All the other six is nothing about money. But it's a system that I put into place that generates currency automatically. Mm. And so let me know if y'all want to see Corey. Y'all do. Y'all do. They uh, do. Because I think we can even go dive deeper into your system and your story of how we could do that because I want to help minorities mm -hmm. really start closing that wealth gap. And I want to help, and I think we do that by one income, uh, exposing them to different opportunities. Yes. Um, exposing them to, hey, if you have gifts and talents that God put inside of you, how are you stewarding those, yep. those gifts? Um, that stewardship can be a job that's paying you six plus figures. That that stewardship can be having a job that's paying mainly 50,000, but using the other side of your gifts and talents to generate money on the side. Um, and then how else, how else we close that gap is is another one's home ownership, mm -hmm. and I just think we in the black community have to 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 really be a home ownership. When you think about ownership, how important is it to? Do you think? Oh, this is a good question. Oh my goodness, this is a good question. Do you think single women should focus on building and owning and doing everything that they want before getting a man? Now, why are you trying to set me up? See, I knew when you got excited about it that it was going to be a setup. Because this is like a, you know, this is like a thing going around social media. You know, don't buy a house before you have a husband. It's going to be a turnoff. It's the whole thing. I personally don't think that you have to put your life on pause while you're waiting on a partner. I don't think that. Because I think that the partner for you will be attracted to the fact that you have built something 
that y'all can now profit from together. Now, I'm not saying that you should expect this husband to move into your house. That is not what I'm saying. Okay. But what I am saying is, hopefully, the husband that you are attracting doesn't see that as a... Um, as something negative that you have invested in yourself, that you believe in ownership. All of the things that I had accumulated and accomplished, um, getting my credit together, just the conversations I was able to have when I met my husband, mm -hmm. that was a turn on for him to know that he met somebody that was responsible, mm. to know that he met somebody who was thinking about building for, you know, building this empire and yeah. not just building my own empire and there was no place for him. I think those Ooh, are two totally different conversations. Two totally different. And I agree with you. I think a lot of people think I, because I did, I think it was like three years ago, yeah, two or three years ago, um, I was uh, working with Ramsey, Dave Ramsey, and um, I was on his show, mm -hmm. and a lady called in and she asked a good question to me and my homegirl, Christy Wright, and 12 million listeners, right? <laughs> and she said, hey, Anthony, I want to purchase a home. She was a single mother of like three, and mm -hmm. she was like, I want to go purchase my dream home. So I asked this one question, I said, well, do you desire marriage? And she was like, yes. And I quickly said, no, don't buy the home. And Christy looked at me like, what? <laughs> and I was like, no, don't do it. And I regret that answer. Why did you, why was that your answer at the time though? At the time, because I was like, well, why do it on your own? Mm -hmm. But here's, here's, here's what I would say, right? Here's what I would say. I, because of where you, like you and I are, right? When I hear the word dream home, I'm thinking of 10,000 square feet. I'm thinking of a pool in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of five, 10 bedrooms. You know, I'm thinking of a five car garage because of where, where I'm at in mm -hmm. life. But to the average person who watched this, a dream home could be a starter home for her and her kids, two, three bedrooms, 1,600 square feet. In a safe In a safe neighborhood and getting out of the hood, getting out of the projects, getting out of the apartment complex that is like no AC. Mm -hmm. And her dream is, I just want to get my kids into the best you know, uh, community or into the best environment for school and the best district for school. And I quickly said no because I associated what my definition of dream was to that. Gotcha. So if I could go back, I would be like, yo, go get you a home. You know, today, though, if a single person came to me, she said, I want to go build a 10,000, 15,000 square foot home on my own. A part of me would be like, well, I mean, one, does it make sense for you to have? Like, okay, take away a woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, it doesn't make sense for me to have a 10,000 square foot home right, by myself. Right. Does, does, does it make sense for me to have that as a single man? Because one, that's a lot of electricity. Two, that's a lot of cleaning up, and I ain't cleaning up that, and I ain't paying someone $1,000 a month to clean it up. Three, that's a lot of room for my dog to be running around and getting the mess. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it doesn't make sense. So I would tell a single woman, it doesn't make sense, not because you're single, and, and you need to wait on the man, but a part of it is does it make sense for you to have that kind of luxury? Mm -hmm. Two, you you buy something like that. What are what are you and your husband going to build together? Right. And I there are certain things that I'm waiting to get, so I can do it with my spouse. And a part of that is like yo, because here's the here's the truth. I can go build this thing, decorate it for myself. The moment I get married, I'm gonna be upset. It's, mm -hmm. Because y'all don't want to come in there and change and just, everything. Yep. And I'm like, no, I just spent all this money to do this and do that. You're going to sit there and just wait. You know? So I'm like, well, be smart, Anthony, because you know how women think. When you find her, she's going to be like, ooh. Even while you're dating, she won't say nothing, but she's going to be I'm going to change this. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, he get, ooh, this is, when, where was he thinking? And I see, I will get upset. You know, because I'm a budgeter. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got this allocated for the budget. I just spent this money for the wedding, for your ring, for the honeymoon. You want me to come back home and either move or Re yeah, y'all gotta move. I was gonna say, you just gotta move. Oh, see, I would get upset. You would not get upset. Like You would get right upset now? thinking about all the other women that weren't the woman. You're not gonna get upset when it's the woman. I'm telling you. No, 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 no. You're, You're right. You're still gonna get upset. You're right. Okay. You're right. No, no. no. I, I, that, that is why I, I just won't invest too much mm -hmm. into where I'm living. Like, my house now is great. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a beautiful home and it's big. But I do want bigger and I do want better, right? But I understand too, I think I'm thinking ahead of time, which mm -hmm. is why I'm saying this to like single people. Like, I'll say that to anybody, single man or woman. Mm -hmm. Go buy some. You know, go buy a condo that you and your wife can, or you and your husband can rent out exactly. y'all get married. Now how you, you can turn that into, property. exactly, how you can turn it into an asset and it's generating income. Listen, let me look at the camera and tell y'all this. If you saw that show a few years ago, I own that mistake and I'm, I, I own the mistake. 
and I apologize. If you're single, get you a home, get you a condo, get you a town home, you know, get, get what you want, you know? Um, and if you really are wanting that, I want you to check out my friends over at Church Hill. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash Church Hill. Uh, they are the number one people when it comes to financing. Super fast. You do all your manual underwriting up front. So when you get your certified approval from them, you have already been through manual underwriting. You are 90% there. They're just waiting on the house. Make sure the praise is. Outside of that, you're good. So when you go to be a homeowner and you go to look for your home and a seller sees your certified approval, they know that you are the for real, for real buyer. Not only we can certify pre-approval, but in this market today, it's Churchill's is fire. They're gonna give you an extra five grand to put on top of your earnest money. And it tells the buyer like, hey, no, we're not coming to the table with cash liquid, but we're gonna come to the table with, hey, we are guaranteed ready, we'll go through closing quickly. And if for whatever reason, we have to back out because of something on your end, the financing end, they get to keep your earnest money plus that $5,000. So it makes you a much better buyer. And you don't have to have a credit score. You don't have to have 100% perfect credit. So I want you to go to anthonyneal.com for slash Churchill uh, because, you know, Coriel, she taught me something. You know, she, she, all of y'all taught me something. Let's be real. You know what I'm saying? I, I, if you're single, go get into something. You know, if you, if you really desire ownership, which I think black people, we, we, we got to get to that mm -hmm. level. Facts. We, we just, we just got to do it. We just got to do it. Um, two quick questions before we end today's show. Um, because you, you've been, you've been dropping some knowledge. Thank you. you know, you, you really been doing, I mean, this is amazing. And for those of y'all watching saying, well, Anthony, what are you talking about this whole 50th exclusive event that you want to bring Coriel to? A uh, text the word six brand to 615-930-3431. Um, and I'm going to text them first. Uh, if you're a part of that group where you, I'm going to bring you in for one weekend, it's not going to be free. I'm going to be real with you. It's going to be some, it's going to be a pretty little penny, but I'm going to teach you how to turn your brand, like Coriel said, into making six, seven figures. Um, I'm literally going to walk through everything that I've learned over the last 15 years of my life, and especially like over the last year of doing this thing on my own. Um, and so we're going to have that conversation. So text the word six, the number six, B-R-A-N-D, to 615-930-3431. And you're going to get a text message back in one day. And if I sell it all in there first, cool. I'm not going to go public with it. Um, and you'll be the first. But, Corio, I'm curious. What are some red flags to people um, that they're in an abusive relationship and they may not just be ready for a relationship? Ooh, so red flags for an abusive relationship. I think... Again, like trusting your gut, you know the red flags. Mm -hmm. Like you sense that something is off when um, when whatever happens. I like to say like when um, when your gut tells you, you got to listen. We always say, you know, like something told me, but then we just keep doing whatever we were doing. So when something tells you, listen to that something. Okay. So that's how you can identify your red flags. When it comes to abuse, though, I think we have to stop defining abuse as only physical. Ooh. Um, Ooh. So many women are in abusive situations right now that are emotionally abusive, mentally abusive, financially abusive, any situation where you are um, not, where you are not um, getting what you deserve and you desire, mm -hmm. that is an abusive situation. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of like manipulation. You know, mm -hmm. we, I feel like narcissism has become like a buzzword, like yeah. gaslighting, every, you know, it's, it's like a thing right now, but that truly is abuse. Wow. So if you are in a situation where someone is making you question yourself or you're thinking like, I know that this is what happened, but every time you bring it up, you know, you're, you're, you're being questioned. It's making you feel like you're crazy. Nine times out of 10, there's some emotional abuse going on. When, um, you know, it's time for you to go out to do the thing that you've been talking about doing for a week and suddenly your man wants you to stay at the house because he just want to spend, he just really want to spend tonight with you. You might be in an abusive relationship because wow. that's manipulation. Wow. And so I think, again, trusting your gut, like I could make a laundry list of the red flags, the generic red flags that might come up. But your situation is your situation. And if you can just figure out like what your how your intuition talks to you and then trust that and actually act on that. That's how I feel like you can um, avoid those red flags or get yourself out of a out of an abusive situation. But it's not if it's not just him knocking you upside the head. Like a lot of it is emotional manipulation. A lot of it is. You know, 
And this may sound weird, but do you think men go to, through abusive relationships as well? Absolutely. Every, I mean, people can be manipulative. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes it can be, you know, where um, gaslighting, again, so you feeling like something, a conversation went one way, but I know that if I say this trigger word, you know, this trigger word, it's going to deflect the attention off of me or it's going to trigger you in a way, you know, so it's emotional manipulation. And I think that that's abuse. Wow. So it can go man or woman. Man or woman. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I had like a two hour show uh, because we can we can still talk. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of knowledge inside of you. And Thank I mean, you. I just, you know, um, you know I, I rock with her, y'all. Thank you. I rock with her. How can my people follow you and, and get more of your wisdom and stuff? So every single week, I drop a brand new podcast episode live every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's called Girl Stop Playing. Okay. And it's all about me helping you stop playing with your potential and start mm -hmm. working for what you want in life and in love. Because obviously, I believe you can make the money and get the honey. You can have it all if you're willing to work. And so every single week, I am bringing on guests so we can have these conversations that really move the culture forward in the space of both money, ownership, entrepreneurship, and relationship. So wow. that's the best place to find me. And you can find that at girlstoppod.com. Yo, and we're going to drop it in today's show notes. Please do. Uh, because I want y'all to go subscribe, leave her a five-star review, rock with her, um, because, yo, she, she dropping some information. So, girl, stop playing with yourself <laughs> and go follow that. Go do the podcast. And, brothers, here's here's what I've learned, you know. For like girl podcasts, like girl shows, or like even like girl books, I still read them. I still listen to them. You know why? Because they they, they tell on themselves. I get all the information. And so that way when I get with my woman, oh, I already know where she's going. Because yeah, I, I was listening. You know what I'm saying? So brothers, you need to subscribe as well. You know what I'm saying? It may be difficult for us to hear some things. You may be like, what? No, no. They think that about us? Yo, but, but it empowers us. To win. You know what I'm saying? They be thinking they're having a conversation by themselves. Now, don't get it twisted. There's this book I read uh, for him only, for her only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I read, and for him only means that only the man's supposed to read that. Mm -hmm. For her only is her. But in the book, the for her only, it teaches you only about what the man wants. Mm -hmm. And then for him only, it only talks about what she wants. I read both of them. Mm -hmm. And I read the for her only, and I highlighted everything that I want in that book. So when I do find the love of my life, I'm going to give her both books. I want you to read this, but I want you to read the for him only part. Highlight everything in that book that really resonates with you. And then I'm giving you this book, and we're going to read it at the same time. So when I read it and I see it's highlighted, I'm going to hit you up. Hey, let's talk about this. What do you, yep. what do you mean by this? And you're going to ask me the same thing. You better ask me the same thing you see the highlight. <laughs> Intentionality. Intentionality. You got to. You know, I'm getting old. I ain't got time to be playing games no more, man. You know what I'm saying? Wife, where you at? Come here, girl. Come on, shoot your shot. <sighs> no. Don't shoot your shot. <laughs> Yo, we're going to jump out information in today's show notes, you guys. Man, make sure y'all follow her. She is absolutely amazing. Um, this was a great show, a great conversation. Um, the next time I'm going to bring her and her husband on yes. uh, so we can learn more about the honey side of things and what we can do as men. Um, to do things because I think we need more, especially within the black community, we need more representation of young black couples who are not perfect, but they're neat. But work it, just working and on it. Working on it, building wealth, mm -hmm. impacting the community, serving the culture, operating out of spirit of excellence. Um, we don't have that that example as much who are non celebrities, like mm -hmm, who are non like mm -hmm. artists and basketball players. Um, it's people who have worked hard and built something. Um, and I and I really want to start showing that more and more on my show. It's needed. And I can't wait to get married because I'm I'm gonna have her on the show. I'm gonna have her sitting right here Come in my on. lap. I'm gonna squeeze on that booty while I'm talking to that girl. This <laughs> this is love. Been waiting on this. You know what I'm saying? Been waiting on this. This is what black wealth looks like. I love who are it. not stars. Who are not famous as far as in from a celebrity perspective. But I do believe influencers are the new celebrities. Facts. Because we're 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 growing something, making a lot of money, and impacting lives. So. Dear wifey, I hope you saw that. Yo, it's your boy Anthony Neal. We'll see you on the next show. Peace out.